Hey GCN family, today I have the privilege of sharing a few thoughts with you regarding the theme of that fourth candle we lit, peace. What first came to mind for me when I thought of this theme is that we have seen the exact opposite of peace in the news in recent times. Over the past few years, our news feed has been filled with images of conflict in Ukraine, Gaza, and even in our own homeland. My wife and I both trace our roots to Latin American countries that have seen decades of violence due to crime and politics. But the need for peace may appear in our lives in nonviolent ways. I have seen firsthand recently how so many of us are dealing with illness or the loss of a loved one. There is also the everyday stress of living and working in one of the most bustling metro regions in the U.S. While all these things may fill our hearts with turmoil and anxiety, I believe that they position our hearts to recognize our need for a savior. Today's devotional reading focuses a bit on Mary and how the mighty angel Gabriel appeared to a young, helpless, and likely impoverished girl. The way the author put it, divine might and glory against human frailty. I love to remember what the angel told Mary, Joseph, and Zechariah throughout this story. And that is, do not be afraid. The devotional also stresses that while Mary is quite helpless, she isn't the most vulnerable one in this story. And I'd like to read a bit of that description. God the creator becomes creature. God the breath of every living thing becomes embryo. God whose hand scoops out the oceans floats in a fetal sack. God whose voice splits cedar trees cries for mother's milk. A God who crushes king's armies can't walk. A God who feeds all living things is hungry. God became vulnerable. And that is what I believe makes a difference and gives us peace. Through a series of divine and overwhelming miracles, our creator and savior subtly and gently entered creation to dwell with us. Isaiah 9 predicted the coming of this savior saying, and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. The great news is that he conquered absolutely everything that could torment us and that his spirit still dwells with us. A few years ago, one of our small groups or life groups went through a Max Lucado uh, study called Anxious for Nothing. And this is kind of a plug to read through this book if you haven't already. And the study revolves around uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And I'll read a small portion of Max's chapter about peace. One wave after another, gale forces followed by thunderstorms. It's enough to make you wonder, will I survive? Paul's answer to that question is profound and concise. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. As we do our part, which is rejoicing in the Lord, pursuing a gentle spirit, praying about everything, and clinging to gratitude, God does his part. He bestows upon us the peace of God. Note that this is not peace from God. Our Father gives us the very peace of God. He downloads the tranquility of the throne room into our world, resulting in an inexplicable calm. We should be worried, but we aren't. We should be upset, but we are comforted. The peace of God transcends all logic, scheming, and efforts to explain it. This kind of peace is not a human achievement. It is a gift from above. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. I have clung to the promise of this uh, of Philippians 4, 7 in recent years. While life in this world has thrown at me several circumstances that could disturb my peace, and it has at many times, the peace of God has guarded my heart when I have gone to him in prayer and thanksgiving. I just have to remind myself to do that. So life in this world at large and in our homes may seem like a cry and yearning for peace because it is. The great news of Christmas is that God is with us. My favorite Christmas song is All Holy Night, and I'd like to quote a few lines from that song to conclude. The King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger, and all our trials born to be our friend. He knows our need, to our weakness is no stranger. Behold your King, before him lowly bend. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppressions shall cease. So Merry Christmas, GCN. I look forward to seeing you at tonight's uh, candlelight Christmas Eve service. From our family to yours, we love you.